Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a relatively common problem that you see in advanced Parkinson's disease, but you can see also this problem in early, early Parkinson's disease, early stages of Parkinson's disease. More commonly you see this problem in multiple system atrophy and Lewy body dementia. I'm talking about orthostatic hypotension which is the, a drop in the blood pressure, okay? And uh, basically what we are going to talk today is what to do in those cases. Let me start defining what is orthostatic hypotension. So orthostatic hypotension means a reduction, a decrease in the systolic blood pressure of at least 20 points or diastolic blood pressure of at least 10 points. Remember, the systolic blood pressure is the upper number and the diastolic is the lower number. Usually within, within the first three minutes of standing. So we are talking about a drop of, of the blood pressure when you stand up. Some patients require a little bit more time than just three minutes. Why this is happening? There are two main reasons. There are other reasons, but we are going to talk about these two. The first one is if you are volume depleted, which means if you are dehydrated or you're having a bleeding. The other mechanism, very important, is the, the vasoconstriction is not working well. The pumping action is not working well because you have what we call in medical term medical terms, autonomic dysfunction. This is commonly seen in patients with Parkinson's disease, multiple system atrophy and dementia uh, with Lewy body. But it is also seen in patients with diabetes. Why we are discussing about orthostatic hypotension? Because orthostatic hypotension increases the risk of falls, which can result in death increase the risk of having cardiovascular diseases and renal diseases, increase the chances of you having a stroke. Uh, most, most likely mechanism is a hypoperfusion of the brain. It's basically decreasing the flow of bl blood to the, to, to the brain. Cognitive, I, I, I mean thinking uh, dysfunction or impairment, and actually all causes of mortality. Then, when to suspect this problem? If you answer yes to any of these nine questions, you should be evaluated for orthostatic hypotension. This is extremely important. So check these nine questions, and if you answer yes to any of them, you should check your blood pressure. Now, how do you check or orthostatic hypotension? Or how do you check orthostatic blood pressure? Well, the first thing is you need to be relaxed. You need to lie down first, resting for at least five minutes, four minutes. Then you check the blood pressure. Somebody need to help you out, okay? Somebody need to help you out uh, with, this, uh, 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 with this blood pressure. So you check the blood pressure, flat, you are lying down, and the pulse. Then you stand up, and you wait one minute and you check the blood pressure again, standing position. One minute and you check the blood pressure and the pulse again, write it down, and then check the blood pressure again in three minutes. If you have a drop, either systolic or diastolic, a drop of 20 of the systolic blood pressure, this is a systolic, or the diastolic blood pressure of 10, that means that you have orthostatic hypotension. Now let's talk about management. And we will divide the management in steps. So the step one is before blaming Parkinson's disease, you need to rule out common conditions or factors that might make these symptoms worse. For example, if you have anemia, treat your anemia. 
make sure that you are getting a good treatment for diabetes. You need to control your glucose, your sugar. Otherwise, things are not going to get better. Treat your severe varicose veins. This is very important. Check your medication list. Ask your doctor to check your medication list. There are many medications that might exacerbate orthostatic hypotension. Treat, if you have heart failure, treat your heart failure. Step two, before taking a pill for orthostatic hypotension, always try non-pharmacological management. Number one, the first thing that you have to avoid is hot showers and saunas. The other important factor is avoid deconditioning. So you need to do exercises. You need to be active physically. Deconditioning is very, very common and happen quickly after being hospitalized and will exacerbate the symptoms of orthostatic hypotension. The other thing that you have to do is just to try to avoid eating high carbohydrate meals. Instead, eat smaller and more frequent meals. Avoid alcohol. Then also increase the, the salt and water intake to expand the intravascular volume. You actually can add one teaspoon of salt to a healthy diet. When I say healthy diet, I mean a diet uh, like a uh, mind diet. Also increase your daily fluid intake. You should be drinking approximately 1.5 to two liters of water daily. Now, this is important. If you have supine hypertension, supine means that you are lying down, facing up flat on the bed. Supine hypertension, you have this problem. Elevate the head of the bed by about 30 degrees. Step three, many patients require pharmacological treatment. So these are the two medications approved by FDA to treat this condition. I typically use Mitodrin as a first choice because it's cheaper, easy to use. Uh, you can start with a very low dose of 2.5 milligram prior to getting out of bed, then uh, before lunch and mid afternoon. The key here is with these two medications, Mitodrin and Droxidopa, is to avoid taking this medication within five hours of bedtime. The problem with this is that these medications tend to cause supine hypertension, which is a very common phenomenon that happened in approximately 50% of the patient with orthostatic hypotension. Now, the side effect of mitodrine, the most common side effect are scalp itching, urinary retention, and like I said before, supine hypertension. The other medication to use, which is more expensive, is Droxidopa, approved by FDA, FDA to treat orthostatic hypotension in the setting of Parkinson's disease. You can start with a low dose of 100 milligrams three times a day in a similar way as, as I discussed uh, uh, with uh, mitodrine. Side effects are similar, but these medications tend to have uh, more side effects related with headaches, dizziness, uh, nausea, uh, fatigue, and again, supine hypertension. Now, there are other medications for example, fludrocortisone, uh, which I typically start 0 0.1 milligram in the morning. It's only once a day. And the typical side effect is, again, supine hypertension. And actually, it's more common to have supine hypertension with this medication than the other two. Low potassium. So your potassium, you need to monitor your potassium. Uh, very important. And if you are taking this medication, maybe try to increase the intake of uh, of food that contain higher uh, potassium, such as bananas. This medication also might cause swelling. We call that edema, especially at the level of the ankles. The other medication is something that we call mestinone or pyridostigmine. Pyridostigmine. Uh, you can start with a low dose of 30 milligrams three times a day. 
Side effect of this medication is abdominal cramps. Uh, usually, this is the most common one. Diarrhea and drooling, okay? Excessive sweating and urinary incontinence. Other medications, especially in uh, big academic centers, specialize in autonomic dysfunction. They use other type of medications, such as this one that you see here, very difficult to pronounce. Um, and actually this one, there is some data suggesting that this medication help specifically in patients that are having post prandial hypotension, which is the, the low blood pressure after you eat. So this is, a, this is a medication that I will try if somebody is complaining of low blood pressure after eating. The problem is that sometimes it's very difficult to get the approval from the medical insurance. This is a very important evidence-based medicine review published in 2019 by the Movement Disorder Society. Based on the data, they recommend droxidopa. Uh, you see here that at least short term uh, is very effective. And uh, other option that you have based on this evidence is these two medications that we discussed before, fludrocortisone and mitodrine. They indicate here uh, possibly useful. These are uh, final important points. And this is a typical question that I get in the clinic, a very important question. When to treat high blood pressure in a patient with this condition, neurogenic orthostatic hypotension, in the setting of Parkinson's disease, multiple system atrophy or uh, dementia with Lewy body. I will tell you that only if the blood pressure is over 160, and I would say the average uh, 170 uh, of systolic or diastolic blood pressure of over 100 is when you really need to treat the patient, especially in patients with the largest drop in blood pressure uh, when they stand up especially those patients when they have a, a change of 80 points, those patients are more susceptible to have a drop in blood pressure when you treat them. So they are very, very susceptible. And it's even worse to have a low blood pressure to, than having high blood pressure in these patients. So that this is why those patients need what we call permissive supine hypertension in order for them to stand up without passing out. Otherwise they would be passing out and they will have fractures, intracranial hemorrhage and many other things. Now, if you really need to treat the blood pressure, always use short acting antihypertensive medication, short acting antihypertensive medication, such as a very old medication, Captopril. Nobody uses this medication anymore, except in these type of settings. Captopril, 25 milligrams, clonidine, a very low dose, and losartan. I like losartan, to use losartan uh, because of the half-life. Uh, and I start with 25 milligrams. And I usually remember that the blood pressure uh, tend to go high in this patient uh, in the afternoon or at night when they are supine. Uh, these patients tend to have a low blood pressure in the morning. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.